camera. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our <clears throat> daily devotions with Pastor Sutton here. Glad you're here with us on this Monday morning, the the uh, <clears throat> 9th of May, May 9th. Uh, it's Job Job's day today. I, I haven't got um, what about Job pulled up here, but um, it's it's uh, today is a commemoration of of Job, um, who we know uh, suffered greatly but remained faithful, and uh, in the end, um, he didn't want to question what God was doing, but his friends' doubts and concerns that they kept putting before him that he must be such a wicked man uh, finally. Uh, caused him to ask why uh, why God did what he did. And uh, when God shows up, he says, I'm God. It's not, you don't get to ask that question. It's not, that's not for you. And that reminds us, um, that reminds us not to go trying to peer into the hidden will of God, you know, what God plans for us, but simply to trust in him Um and in the end, uh, Job repented. And one of the one of the uh, I, I was going to say most famous statements out of Job or readings out of Job that's used quite often at funerals. Um, I know my Redeemer lives. Um, that, that he stands before uh, God after he died um, uh, in his own flesh and with his own eyes and sees sees God. So. He gives us witness uh, to the to the promise of the resurrection. And Job's way before Christ uh, is is uh, walking on the earth. Um, he uh, the Job dates back to um, the time of of Abraham or before. Um, and so that's that's showing us that that the idea of uh, the resurrection, the promise of the resurrection, was not a a new thing in Christ's day. He's just the evidence of it, the proof of it. Even when Jesus uh, meets with uh, Mary and Martha before before he raises Lazarus, um, uh, he uh, he asks Mary, um, and Mary says, "I know that he'll be. I know he'll be raised in the resurrection." Um, and then Jesus says, "I am the resurrection, the life, and the way." Anyway. Job today, Job, commemoration of, of Job, patriarch. <clears throat> Let's, uh, quit coughing. Let's, um, cold is getting a little better, but it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. It hasn't been two weeks. Uh, let's see here. Jill, uh, Jill, Jill, no, I don't have him. Monday morning, first day with a new mouth. Neil and Geraldine, good morning. Kathy, good morning. Down in Chicago, huh? It's sunny down there. Hang on to that. We're supposed to get thunderstorms and all kinds of nasty stuff before the day is over today. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Glad you're here with us. Um, Brenda, good morning. Uh, sunny and 61 with a high of 75 in Kalamazoo. That's nice. We're supposed to get to the 70s, um, but I don't know what's really going to happen. It's supposed to feel cooler than the actual temperature because we're going to have uh, winds and breezes. Debbie, good morning to you and Grant and Ann. Uh, and uh, Michael, good morning. Uh, unbelievable, another sunny day. <laughs> Two in a row. Ah, and you're headed to the dentist. Well, God's blessings. Uh, may it go well and your teeth be okay. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. I already brought in daffodils. Ah, Jeannie, kind of miss seeing your flowers once in a while. Verna, good morning. Ashley, good morning to you and God's blessings. And then there's Bonnie and Glenn, good morning. Yeah, God's blessings on all mothers. Yeah, yesterday being, being Mother's Day. There is no greater vocation uh, that God has given us um, than a mother to raise her child. And, and we forget that. Our society today uh, mocks that, but there is no no greater vocation uh, that God has given than, to, than the raising up of, of the next generation. And he placed that in, in the hands of mothers and fathers, but primarily under mothers. <clears throat> 
And Meg, good morning. Glad you're joining us here today. Well, let's go ahead. It looks like that's everybody that's piped in to all that haven't said anything or will watch later. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God's blessings to you. Let's go ahead and get into this. If you have a Lutheran service book, the uh, hymnal of the Missouri Synod, uh, on page 295, you'll find daily prayer for individuals and families, the morning order. And that's where we begin here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For the first time in quite a while, I'm going to skip over Sunday and not try and mix it into Monday here. Sunday was <clears throat> Sunday was the was the uh, anointing of um, leave of not Levi of um, Aaron and his sons in preparation for the royal priesthood. Um, and today we pick up in Leviticus chapter nine. But first, our psalm. Our psalm is Psalm 119, which is the long acrostic on God's law. Um, but this is just verses 129 through 138. So Psalm 119, beginning at verse 129. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your just decrees. You have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in all faithfulness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, will be forever. Amen. Make your face shine upon your servants and teach me your statutes. Right, that brings to mind the benediction at the end of the service. Uh, may he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Um, but my eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. I think that's valid. Well, I don't think. I know that's valid. Um, the, look at the world we live in, and we struggle with it, right? We have, we have a certain foundation that's been given to us in God of right and wrong, of, of proper and improper, um, of truth and, and not, um, that comes from the scriptures. It comes from what God teaches. It comes from an absolute source, a known source. Um, and when we see the world straying from those things, we mourn, right? We mourn over the sins of others because we know what it ultimately will bring for them. When you know what you have, and then you see others who are running away from that by their life choices, shall I say, or by not living in that or not believing that this is the way, the truth, and the life, then we are saddened by it. Eventually, we have to just say, let it go, but we we really never do. We really are constantly struggling to share that peace that's in us with them. The peace which surpasses all understanding that comes from Christ's gifts to us, the faith that he's given, the truth of his word. <clears throat> Our reading today, Leviticus chapter 9, verses 1 through 24. So the the first part of Leviticus chapter 9. Um, I'm a little surprised because we jumped. So as I said, yesterday was was um, Leviticus. Oh, I guess it was Leviticus. Uh, oh, all right. Yeah, Leviticus 8 uh, yesterday. Um, 
boy, how did we go from, we went from Exodus 40, the erecting of the tabernacle, to Leviticus 8, um, which was uh, the consecration of Aaron and his sons, um, which we're not going to read, um, to Leviticus 9. i got to go back and look and see what's in Leviticus 1 through 7 that we just blew over it. It might be a reiteration of some of the things in the temple or the generations or things like that. I mean, I don't keep all this stuff up here. I have, I have, I have a book so I can go back and figure out what it was. I don't have to keep it all up here. Leviticus 9, chapter, chapter 9, 1 through 24. On the eighth day, Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and he said to Aaron, Take for yourself a bull calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering both without blemish and offer them excuse me offer them before the lord and say to the people of israel take a lamb or take sorry take a male goat for a sin offering and a calf and a lamb both a year old without blemish for a burnt offering and an ox and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before the lord and a grain offering mixed with oil for today the Lord will appear to you. <clears throat> and they brought what Moses commanded in front of the tent of meeting. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is the thing that the Lord commanded you to do, that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar and to offer your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people and bring the offering of the people and make atonement for them as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron drew near to the altar and killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron presented the blood to him and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering he burned on the altar, as the Lord commanded Moses. The flesh and the skin he burned up with fire outside the camp. Then he killed the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons handed him the blood, and he threw it against the sides of the altar. And they handed the burnt offering to him, piece by piece, and the head, and he burned them on the altar. And he washed the entrails and the legs and, the, and burned them with the burnt offering on the altar. Then he presented the people's offering and took the goat of the, of the sin offering that was for the people and killed it and offered it as a sin offering like the first one. And he presented the burnt offering and offered it according to the rule. And he presented the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar, besides the burnt offering of the morning. Then he killed the ox and the ram, the sacrifice of peace offerings for the people. And Aaron's sons handed him the blood, and he threw it against the side of the altar. But the fat pieces of the ox and of the ram, the fat tail, and that which covers the entrails and the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver. They put the fat pieces on the breasts and the, he burned the fat pieces on the altar. But the breasts and the right thigh Aaron waved for a wave offering before the Lord as Moses commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. And he came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting. And when they came out, they blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the pieces of fat on the altar. And when the, all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blood, 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 blood. 
When you read Leviticus, that's what you hear, blood. Um, blood is the life of the animal. Blood is your life. The Israelites are commanded not to eat anything um, with its blood still in it, but rather to, um, uh, to drain the blood. Um, blood is life. It is the offering of blood um, that demonstrates that the creature who has been offered has been killed. Um, why all the blood? Well, in, in the law, um, the, what do I want to say, the, the offering um, that must be made for sins is um, the life, the blood. Um, it's blood that atones for sin because blood means that there's been death and death means that sin has been atoned for. If from the very beginning, we don't think about it, but when we go back to Adam and Eve and the events that took place there, um, after pronouncing the curse, um, God kills two or three of his creatures to make garments for Adam and Eve, which means he killed them. And so the first sacrifices that shed blood are made by God. Why? To atone for the sin of Adam and Eve. And then as he gives the commands, and, and we haven't read through the, through the Levitical laws, which probably are in one, one through eight, one through seven, Maybe that's why we haven't read them. You see that every sin that, that God sees requires the sacrifice of blood. You know, that an animal will be killed and bled out. Um, and then there's the process of, of the full sacrifice, the burnt offering, the wave offering, the peace offerings, things like that, um, that, that are various things. The tabernacle. Um, and the temple, when it's built, um, would smell like slaughterhouses. Um, incense burning covers some of that. That's the prayers of God's people, fragrant offerings to the Lord. <laughs> but a lot of it is the stink of burning flesh, which is terrible to our nose to our senses, the smell of blood, that, that smell of iron in the air that comes from the blood. It was said that the, the uh, drains coming out of the temple running into the rivers would run, run red uh, during the time of Passover when all the lambs are being sacrificed for, for, the, uh, for the Passover feast. You've got tens of thousands of Israelites and Jews coming to to the temple at that time in the first century uh, AD to, uh, to, to celebrate the Paschal Feast, and they all have to be, the ant lambs all have to be bled out there at the temple and, and roasted, to, to be taken and roasted in their, in their entirety, in their whole. Um, but that's how Christ saves us. The final atonement that comes in Christ is blood on the cross, right? I think of all the Gospels, John shows this to us best. And I, I, I guess I had not thought of it this way, but I, I heard this last week when I was at, um, uh, at the conference I was at, I heard uh, it said this way, and I, and I think it's something to think about. When, when God creates man and woman, he creates Adam from the ground, from the dust, and then he, he takes Eve out of his side, takes woman, out of woman. Um, woman is, is made out of the side of, of Adam, the first Adam. 
um, in the first bride. Um, when Christ dies, he gives us to his church. He gives us his church, and his his church is known also as his bride. The church is the bride of Christ. So if Jesus is the second Adam um, on the cross, um, just as Adam was put into a deep sleep so that God could take the side, his side and make woman, Jesus is put into a deep sleep, the sleep of death. Um, and then when the soldiers come, one thrusts a spear into his side, and from his side pours water and blood, which is the mark of the church. It's the mark of the church, the mark of his bride, the church. And so from the, why do I say that? Well, blood, which is the sacrament of the altar, and water, which is the sacrament of baptism, by which we enter in and become part of the body of Christ, his church his bride. And so out of the first Adam comes his bride from his side, and out of the second Adam comes his bride from his side, pouring forth water and blood. And that blood is the atonement of our sins. It is the forgiveness of our sins. The blood, the, the old Lutheran hymn, the blood of all the beasts could not uh, thus atone but the blood of Christ, because he is son of God and son of man, since because he is true God, his blood can atone not just for a sin, as the blood of the beast did, but for the sins of all the people, and the sins of everyone, from Adam uh, to the end of time. From his side pours his new bride, the church, and the body and the, and the water and the blood that, that flows forth, making us pure, holy, able to be present in his sight, uh, calling us by his spirit into that faith that saves us from sin, death, and hell through his death and resurrection. Blood was commanded by God to atone for sin, and that's what Aaron is doing here, first offering atonement for himself so that he might approach the altar <clears throat> to make atonement for all of Israel through the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offering. And now through the blood of Christ, we are able to approach that altar. Um, and our sacrifice is not the blood of beasts, but, um, well, as the scriptures say, a, a contrite heart, a, a, a broken spirit and a contrite heart the Lord will not abandon. Um, it's it's the uh, the Pharisee and the publican uh, in the in the sanctuary. The publican says, "Thank God I'm not like that guy over there." But the publican saying, "Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner," beating his chest. And we can look to the cross. And we can look to what Christ has done for us, what God has done to us for us through Christ Jesus, what Christ has done for you out of love for the Father, what the Father has done for you out of love for you, forgiving you all your sins. And in that forgiveness, giving you life and salvation in him alone, in his bride, the church formed by the blood and the water that flows from his ribbon side. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day here. <clears throat> oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the king in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and our prayers for ourselves and others on this Monday morning. Heavenly Father, you have delivered me from the darkness of night and brought me safely to the light of day. As my day begins, scatter the darkness of sin in my life. Remind me that I do not belong to sin, death, or the devil. I belong only to you. You have claimed me as your dear child in the waters of holy baptism. You have marked me with the cross of Christ upon my forehead and on my heart. You have clothed me with the light of your salvation. I am yours. Help me to live as your child, diligently and faithfully doing the work that you have prepared for me to do this day. Let the fruit of my labor, labor be used to care for the lonely, the distressed, the poor, the homeless, the underemployed, the unemployed. Give me a spirit of patience, kindness, peace, gentleness, and self-control. May all I say and do be pleasing in your sight and declare the excellencies of you who have called me out of darkness into your marvelous light of salvation. Bless the leaders of our nation and all who live in it. Give your wisdom to those in authority so they may rule with integrity and honor for the good of all the people. Teach me as your child to lead a peaceful and quiet life. To your praise, honor, and glory always. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who are ill, those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, those whose weakened states cause them to wonder how long life will abide. Grant them the assurance of your Son, the comfort of your peace, and where it is your good and holy will, healing, as is, as is good for us according to that same will. This day we pray especially for Larry, Peter, Karen, Olive, uh, uh, James, Pat, Lois, Brianne, Ashley, Susie, Don, Bob, Megan, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them again, Lord, peace in your most holy name. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, bless, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions to a close on this Monday morning, May 9th. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning for our daily devotions together. God's peace. Enjoy the weather where it's nice for you, and where it's not that nice, well, be glad it's raining, because the ground is very dry here in northern Wisconsin. God's peace, and we will see you tomorrow.